Like I said, welcome, my sisters and brothers, to another Friday prayer service. I'm Brother Cornell, and reading for me is Brother James. Brother James, let us open up with the Ten Commandments that God had written for the whole world to keep. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Our scripture reading was taken from Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And as we always say, Brother James, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That's right, brother. So, Brother James, you know, as the book has been telling us from Genesis to Revelation, the Lord say that we have an obligation to be as knowledgeable in the word of God as possible. That's right that we are supposed to look at this word of God. We are supposed to take it and examine ourselves and see where is it that we need improvement because as long as we are breathing, we need impro improvement, don't we? Every day, that's right, brother, every day. Every day we need improvement. So the title of tonight's lesson is The Words of God Almighty. The Words of God Almighty. And Brother James, let us start this off in Exodus, the 23rd chapter, because the Lord has been telling us that even his holy angels, which are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those that shall be heirs of salvation, that their job is to save us. And the evil angels' job is to destroy us. So if we know that, then we need to stay with the holy angels of God, don't we? 
Yes, we do, brother. Yes, we do. Exodus 23, and let's pick it up at verse 20, because the Lord is going to tell us here about his angels and what their job is. And let's pick it up there, my brother. Exodus 23 and 20. Go ahead. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Uh huh. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. So the Lord is telling us that he sent an angel before us to keep us in the way and to bring us into the place which he has prepared. And we know that the Lord has even prepared a place of everlasting life for us, hasn't he? Yes, he has, brother. Yes, he has. So we have to also take advantage of that. But it says, beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not forgive your sins. And my name is written in him. So the angel don't have to go back and check with the Lord on how to punish you when you're going contrary to the word of God. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Read verse 22 and we go skip down. Go ahead. But if thou shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For my angels, angels shall go before thee and bring thee into the, unto the Amorites and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. So the Lord is telling us here that, hey, but if we obey his voice and do all that he speak, that, hey, that he will be an enemy unto our enemies and an adversary unto our adversaries. And the last time I checked, if you say you serve in God, you got plenty of enemies. That's right, brother. That is right. And you got plenty of adversaries and you need to make sure that you're doing everything according to thus says the Lord. So when the Lord gave us this land, what did he say we have to do in verse 24 and 25? Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down to, up to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Uh huh. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. So the Lord is saying here that, hey, that we are not supposed to bow down to any God that's other than him. We're not supposed to serve the graven image. And the Lord say, and if ye shall obey the Lord, he shall bless you. He shall bless your bread, your water, and he will take sickness out of the midst of thee. We need the Lord because this whole earth is filled with sickness, isn't it? Yes, it is, brother. Yes, it is. I mean, everywhere you go, you got people, you got hospitals. You get sick and go to the hospital, and they tell you you got a 10-hour waiting time. You might not make 10 hours. May not make it, brother. But we know that the word of God say that he will take all sickness away from us. All we have to do is serve him because if you're not serving the right God, that is a sickness also, isn't it? Yes, it is, brother. Now, let's turn over to Second Chronicles, my brother, 16th chapter. Second Chronicles 16. Because the angels of God watch our every move. And the word of God is here to make us strong. That's why he tells us to read and to practice his word every day, because it can make you strong. Yes, it will. Now, we're going to read one verse here, brother, 2 Chronicles 16, and we're going to read verse 9. Go ahead. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. So Lord is saying that the eyes of the Lord, those angels that he told us to beware of them and provoke them not, right? Yes, right. He told us that, hey, they run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show themselves strong in behalf of those who are serving God with all they might. Because if you are serving God with all your might, you should not be lacking any strength when it comes to eternal life. That's right, you, brother. You have to stay the course because... The Lord say, if not, then you're going to be done foolishly 
and therefore you shall have wars. We have a lot of people that have wars even in between their ears, don't they? That's right. It's a constant war and battle, right, brother? That's right, brother. That's right. And so we are in a place that we don't have to be because God said that, hey, he got his angels to help to make us strong. And the last time I checked, this earth from one end to the other is filled with nothing but weak people. That is so true, brother. <laughs> because dirt is limited, isn't it? Yes, it is. It turns to mud when you throw some water on it. Yes, it does, brother. Yes, it does. Now, let's go into Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans 8. Because the word of God bears witness to our actions if we are serving God or if we are not. And that that's why we have to have this word of God almighty to help us to get salvation. Romans 8, brother, and let's pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's right. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the Lord say, those that follow the flesh mind the things of the flesh. The flesh is all about death and destruction. Always want to kill you. Always want to kill you. The Lord said, but also that we have to follow the spirit. And he says to be flesh minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Then therefore, all of the ones who are trying to get eternal life, then you have to walk in the spirit of God, don't you? Yes, you do, brother. That word. Yes, sir. Because the Lord would tell us in that verse 7 and 8. Read that for me. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Mm -hmm. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So the Lord is telling us that the flesh mind. It hate the works of the spirit. It hate telling you how it is that you are supposed to walk with God, it's always telling you how to destroy yourself, how to get in trouble, how to let the cares of your mind take you in a place that is not good. So the Lord just said that, hey, if you're walking in the flesh, you can't please me. So that means that we have to find out how to please God. That's what this whole life is about, isn't it? Yes, it is, brother. That is right. We look at the beloved son. He said, hey, the father loved me because I always did the things that pleased him when I walked in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So we have to walk in the flesh, but with the spirit in the mind of God. Skip down to verse 12 for me, brother, and go ahead. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You see how the Lord is always telling us about life and death when it comes to the flesh and the spirit? Yes, right. He said, you don't owe that flesh nothing because it can't profit you in the end. Mm -mm. But what you owe, you owe to the spirit of God, the one who came and laid down his life for us. He walked in the spirit and we owe him all the days that we have breath in our body right he said that spirit his word is life yes it is brother now pick it up and read that verse 14 go ahead for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god mm -hmm. or if ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear for if for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father that's why the Lord is able to measure us all the time and see where our spirit is when it comes to serving him. Because he said that if you led by his spirit, then you are already his sons and his daughters of God. And that is the best place to be that we have ever known, is it? Yes, it is, brother. Yes, it is. And then the Lord tells us he's going to grant us the spirit of adoption and we're going to be in his family forever. Therefore, we don't have to worry about that sickness that we read about earlier, do we? No, we don't, brother. No, we don't. 
ain't gonna be no more crying, no pain. That's why the Lord say, hey, I want you to do it the way I say do it. Verse 16, that's the last verse. Go ahead. The spirit itself bared witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Lord said that the word itself bear witness whether or not we are walking in the word of God. So we have to make sure that we are taking our report card serious every day that we have breath. That's right, brother. We want to pass in grade. You want to pass in grade and you can do it, thus says the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Because he told us, I never put on you more than you can bear. And if I put something on you and you say it's too heavy to bear, when I see that you can't take no more, I shut the door and open a window so that you can climb out. That's right, brother. <laughs> That's Always a great God, ain't it? Yes, it is. Merciful. Merciful, brother. Merciful. Turn back to Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Because this word of God, man, it's just, we're not worthy, James. No, we're not, brother. We're not every, worthy. Every day I find something I can do better. Yes, so sir. Every I mean, day. Every, I mean, improve myself. That's right. Every day we can improve ourselves, brother. Every day. So in this Deuteronomy 20, the Lord fights for us every day. And he is the one that gives us the wisdom and knowledge to stay away from gods that cannot profit. That's right. Deuteronomy 20, and pick it up at that verse 1 for me, brother. And go ahead. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots, and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Yes. And it shall be when ye are come nigh to the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. Uh-huh. And shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. Why not? For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Man, what greater blessing is it than that right there, brother? And I'd love to have the Lord with me if I was in a fight, boy. Yes, sir. The Lord saying, hey, for the Lord your God, it is he that goeth with you to fight against all your enemies. Didn't he say, I'll be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversary? Your big brother. That's right. That's how we are blessed enough to continue, all of us that are taking part in this lesson this evening and all around the world, all of those that are still in the game of life. Isn't that a blessing? Yes, it is, brother. Yes, it is. The Lord is continuing to say, hey, I'm fighting for you. Skip down, my brother, and pick it up at verse 16 and go ahead. But of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God does give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. It's a reason for that. Go ahead. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God has commanded thee. Now, some people will sit back and say, oh, the Lord, he's saying destroy all these people and you shall save nothing that breatheth because false gods have always gotten us in trouble, have they? Yes, they have. And Even if this they. brother or this sister is serving a false god inside of their house and they connect on to the husband or to the wife and to the children, now you just put that whole house in jeopardy. Yes, you have. Read that last verse for me, 18, brother, because this is the reason the Lord didn't want us to deal with with no gods other than him. Go ahead. That they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. Wow. You see why the Lord said we'll sin against him if we're going to serve all these other gods? That's why the Lord was telling us. He said, look, he said, all you have to do is just serve me and I won't do you no hurt. Now, anybody that want God to hurt them, they need to read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation 24-7. That's right, brother. 
because the Lord is not playing games because he hates gods that don't carry the breath that we breathe. And I've never saw another God say, I give you breath every day. <laughs> That's right. None of them. <laughs> None of them, brother. You gotta so this God here that we're read, reading about, he is the true God, is it? Yes, it is, brother. Now turn over, brother, to Ezekiel, the 22nd chapter. Because false gods are here to destroy souls. That's why they're here, to destroy you. That's right. They can't profit you nothing. And the Lord is telling us that. That's why he said, turn away from these gods. Because they are out to do you hurt. Ezekiel 22, brother. And we're going to pick it up at that verse 23. And then we're going to skip down. Because we want to see where these words are coming from. Read 23 on down. Let's just read through it. Go ahead, my brother. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon the day of indignation. Uh -huh. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving in the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. So look how the Lord and the word of the Lord came and said, there's a conspiracy of our prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion. They go around and they devour souls. When they job is to save souls. But they go around, they devour souls. And the Lord say, and they have taken the treasure of precious, precious things. They take the word of God and say, oh, you don't need that word of God. Trying to kill you. The commandments are done away with. They don't exist no more. You can eat you. anything. All you got to do is pray over it. They trying to kill that you. is taking away the precious words of eternal life from the people who God has created. That is right, brother. Verse 26. Go ahead. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and and profane neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes for my sabbaths and i am profaned among them look at the lord saying the priests have violated his law if you don't have a law of god you don't need a bible that's right you don't you can put that aside and the lord saying they have put no difference between the holy and the profane between the clean and the unclean then the Lord wrote a dietary law for nothing, didn't he? Yes, he did. If you ain't going to listen to it. That's right. If you're not going to listen to it, and the Lord say, and they have hid their eyes from the Sabbath. The Lord say, the seventh day is the Sabbath. That is the day that he sat down and rested, and man come along and tell you that don't exist no more. The first day of the week is the Sabbath. That's not right. No, it's not. That's not good to take the word of God and change it. That's right. For your own pleasure. For your own pleasure, brother. 27 and 28. Go ahead. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves raving in the prey to shed blood and to mm. destroy souls to wow. get this honest gain. Wow. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken. Now, why would you want to sit in front of a preacher who the Lord don't even talk to? That's right. Who the Lord is not showing him the word of God so that he can give it to the people. That guy might be one of those that are there, a ravening to pray, to shed blood, and to destroy souls. And will sometimes even do it for dishonest gain, won't he? Yes, he is. Most of them are. And the Lord said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, world and lose his soul? That's right. Profit you nothing. Yep, profit you nothing. And the Lord said, and also, they turn around and they bag one another up with the same falsehood. Yep. And the people are sitting out there getting destroyed. But we also pray, Brother James, that even the ministers that are out there preaching to the people, may they see the light and turn their doctrine unto the doctrine 
of the Bible. Yes, sir. That's right, brother. And be able to check that preacher out. Make sure that what he is telling you is something that you can read with your own eyes like we do at the Israel of God. Isn't that correct, brother? Yes, sir. Now, let's turn over to Job, the 26th chapter. Job 26. And God is going to tell us that, hey, look, I created all things. I even created Satan. But if Satan has went wicked, then that ain't the one to follow, is it? No, it's not. Job, brother, the 26th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Job 26 and 6. Because the Lord, this is the true and living God that we are getting ready to read about. The one that give us our breath every day. The one that allow for us to get up out the bed and to be in our right mind to serve him. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. Hell is naked before him, and destruction has no covering. Mm. He stretched out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Bad God, ain't it? Bad. <laughs> he bound up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. Uh-huh. He holded back the face of his throne and spreaded his cloud upon it. Yes. He has compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. That's right. The pillars of heaven tremble and are stumped, astonished at his reproof. Yes. He divided the sea with his power, and by his understanding, he smited through the proud. Now, didn't the Lord divide the Red Sea with his power? Yes, he did. We can go back and read that and confirm that the Lord did just that, and by his understanding, he smited through the proud. You know, Pharaoh had old proud army, didn't he? Yes, he did. And the Lord let all of them drown on the bottom of the sea, didn't he? Yes, he did. Go ahead, brother. Read that verse 13. By his spirit, he has gone at the heavens. His hands has formed the crooked serpent. Oh, so the Lord's hands is the one that has formed the crooked serpent. That's right. The one that tells you it's okay for you to walk in the flesh. That's the one right. that tells you that there is no difference between the clean and the unclean. Yes, he is. That's the right. The one that tells you is no difference between the holy and the unholy. Do whatever you feel and expect a good reward at the end of the show. But we know that's not even written in the pages of the book, is it? Not at all. Not at all. Now turn over to Malachi, the third chapter. Malachi 3. Because the Lord is letting it be known. He is the one that created Satan. Satan chose to hook a left in the road and go in the way of wickedness, didn't he? Yes, he did, by his own will. By his own will. That's right. And we have our own will, too, don't we? That's right. We and we better make sure it's to serve God. Make the right choice. Don't be like mm -hmm. Satan. No, don't be like him, brother. Malachi, the third chapter. And let's pick it up at verse 2. And then we're going to skip down because... This is something that the Lord has been telling us. Who will be ready when Jesus returns? Who will be ready? Verse 2. Go ahead. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like full of soap. Now, there's nothing wrong, Brother James, with having that faith that we shall be able to abide at his coming. That's right. Because we are taking our report card serious, so is our viewers out there, and we are all looking for that great reward that the Lord promised to all those that love him. Yes, he did. That's right, brother. Skip down, brother, to verse 5, because if this is some of the ways that you act while you have time, rebuke them, stop them. Verse 5. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against adulterers, and against false swearers, mm -hmm. and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, yeah. the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, said the Lord of hosts. So look how the Lord said who he's going to be swift against, the people that's doing all these things. So if you are still in the game, you have time to repent, don't you? That's right, brother. As long as you got breath. Long as you got breath. 
because the Lord is saying that, hey, he is going to be swift against these people and against those that turn aside to stranger from his right because the stranger, I don't care what color you are, black, white, rich, poor, young, old, China, Russia, hey, wherever you come from, Ukraine, it doesn't matter. We all are supposed to get the true word of God given from one shepherd, and that's the one that shared his life for our lives. Isn't that's it? right, brother. Jesus. Yes, sir. That is who. Because the Lord is saying he hated wickedness back in Genesis, which we go read about, but he hated all the way through Revelations. He hate wicked because he is a God that changed not. Verse six, brother. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob's are not consumed. Thank God for that. Go ahead. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? And so look how the people do. The Lord say, Look, you done done all this wickedness. He said, But hey, I just want you to come back to me and return unto me and repent. And I will help you. But you turn around and say, what's the profit in turning back to the Lord? <laughs> Life everlasting. That's right, brother. Life everlasting is what it is. And when you turn to the Lord, no matter what your problem might be, no matter what your situation might be, you may have something going on mentally or you might have something going on around you. Let's see what the Lord say he would do because he say he created the crooked serpent, right? Yes, sir. Let's see what he say about the crooked serpent in verse 11. And then that'll be it. Go ahead. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So the Lord would tell us that he'll even rebuke the devourer for our sake. When it looked like he's getting ready to dump too much on us, look how the Lord orchestrated what it was that Satan could do to Job and what it was he could not do to Job. That's right. Because we know if Satan could have, he would have took his life, but God say, don't take his life, then it was a done deal, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It would have been. Yeah. So the so he, is, he went through a lot of suffering, but the Lord did deliver the brother at the end of the road because yeah. it is a great thing to fear this God. Yes, it is, brother. A great thing. And let's skip down, brother, and read verse 16. And go ahead. Let's see the words of God Almighty and what we got coming. Go ahead. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Yeah. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spared his own son that serveth him. Brother James, we're doing all this hard work because we want to be a jewel, don't we? Yes, sir. I do. Yes, we want to be a jewel for the Lord. And we know all of those that are serving God, they have the same thing in mind, that they want to be a jewel for the Lord. And then what power is he going to give us in verse 18? Go ahead. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Look at the power Lord is going to give us to be able to look straight at a brother or sister and know who's faking and who's not. That's right, brother. Because we got a lot of fakes out here. <laughs> you know it. it <laughs> a lot of pretending. A lot of talking. A lot of talking, brother. That's all they do is talk, but they're not walking. Like the Lord say, hey, like that, that song go, their body is here with me, but their mind is on the other side of town. <laughs> they ain't thinking about serving God. No, they're not. But the word repent is even available to them also, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now let's go in and read a little something about Job in verse 27, chapter 27, Job 27. Because the arm of righteousness is ours as long as we live. The Lord give us the power if we can get up out of bed or whether we can't to still put on the whole armor of God, especially 
between the ears. That's right, brother. And walk with him. Job 27, brother. And let's see what Job, this is why he was, when he was going through some of his suffering here, let's see what the brother had to say. Go ahead, Job 27 and one. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, as God liveth, who has taken away my judgment and the almighty who has vexed my soul. Yeah. All the while my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostril. Uh-huh. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Now we have to make sure that like the Lord said, as God liveth, Job say, who have taken away my judgment. The Lord put Job in a tough situation, didn't he? Yes, he did, brother. He took away his judgment and he said, the almighty who have vexed my spirit. But even though it was a conversation with God and Satan and he allowed for Satan to vex Job, it was still the doing of the Lord or Satan couldn't have touched him, could he? Couldn't have touched him at all. That's why the Lord said, I created the crooked serpent. I will rebuke him. I will get him up off you. Read that verse five and six for me. Go ahead. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. Mm. My righteousness, I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. So listen to what Job is saying. God forbid that I should justify you till I die. I will not remove my integrity from me. Job was like, Lord, I'm going to walk with you all the days that I have breath in my body. I'm going to keep your laws. I'm going to keep your statutes. I'm going to keep your commandments. I'm going to do everything in this book that you said that I'm supposed to do as long as I live because that's part of the deal for me to get the reward coming at the end of the show. That's right, brother. Now, that's, that's not asking too much. Not at all, brother. This world does not have enough fun in it for you to give up your salvation for. That's right. Ain't nothing I would give up for. it. Nothing, brother. That's why Lord talk about the adulterers and all that stuff. There is no woman so beautiful, so no man so handsome, nobody so debonair, even if they got all the money that me and James are showing in our background. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't worth you losing your life over. Yeah, it's just an illusion. It's just an illusion, brother. That's all it is because you can gain all of that and it's still right, lose right. your soul. And that's why the Lord was telling us about Job when he was having that conversation with Satan. Have you considered my servant Job a perfect and upright man who feared me and do what he say? So we have to fear God too, don't we? Yes, we do, brother. You got people going around saying you don't have to fear God. That's not written in the book. That's like a death sentence you write when you say that. Yes, sir, because if nothing else, Brother James, you're supposed to fear coming up short and not making the team. That's I'm what you're supposed you. to be afraid of. I'm telling you, the alternative is not a choice. No, it's not, brother. It's definitely not a choice. So read that verse 8 and 9 for me, and let's see what else Job had to say. Go ahead. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he has gained, when God taketh away his soul? Mm. Will God hear his cry when trouble come upon him? Wow. You see what the Lord is saying here? He said, what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he have gained all of these wealth and riches and all this good stuff, but God takes away his soul even forever. Woo. That's a scary thought. It is a scary thought. And that's why the words of God Almighty is supposed to be applied unto our life with all our might. And we do need help to get up every day and fight hard to stay on the team of God, we need help. That's why we got that holy angel there with us. Beware of him and provoke him not, because he is there to help you get eternal life as long as you want it. That's right, brother. Now turn over to Romans 13. Romans the 13th chapter. Because it has been said there that, hey, that the arm of righteousness, that is what profits us. Not the arm of wickedness. That's that right. has a reward coming too, don't it? That's right. Romans 13, brother. And let's pick it up at that verse 8. 
because integrity and arm of God comes from above and we are supposed to appreciate it. That's why Job say, as long as I live, I'm not going to give up my integrity. I'm going to let my light shine. That's Brother right. James is supposed to see that I have some light. I'm supposed to see his light. The that's brothers right. and sisters that's out there viewing, we are supposed to see one another's light as long as we have breath. That's right, brother. That old darkness, that old dark attitude that you might bring to the table, it don't profit you nothing. And to be honest with you, sometimes it even vexes our flesh. Mm-hmm. Because you need to pray for some joy if you are hearing the words of God. That's right, brother. Romans 13, brother. Let's pick up verse 1, and then we go skip down. Because we know where all the power comes from. Yes, go ahead, sir. verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Oh, so every soul, doesn't matter, black, white, rich, poor, young, old, no matter where you live, every soul is supposed to be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. So that means that we don't have no power unless God give it to us, do we? That's right, brother. That is right. And the power that God gives us is sent. So if he's sprinkling power on us, let us make the most out of it because that power can carry you all the way across the finish line to eternal life. That's right, brother. Verse 8, brother, and go ahead. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Yeah, you fulfill the law of God to love one another. Go ahead. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Because all of these works here determine whether or not you love your neighbor, you love your brother, or you love your sister. Because if you are cheating, and sneaking in the back door of your neighbor, you don't love your neighbor. That's right. And you don't love her you cheating with either because she playing a dangerous game of adultery as well. That's right, brother. And then if you are turning around and you are the type of person that has no type of filter, integrity when it comes to stealing and lying and bearing false witness, the Lord say, hey, he did not come and die for us to commit these types of sins. That's right, brother. These are atrocities unto the Lord. Verse 10. Love working no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The Ten Commandments. Go ahead. And that, no, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So the Lord is offering this now is high time to awake out of sleep. That's for all the false preachers out there, all the false teachers, all of those that have been making light of the word of God and those that have not found the word yet. The Lord said, wake out of sleep because this thing is almost over. Yes, it is, brother. Yes, it is. Lord say salvation is nearer than we believed it was. Verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Yes. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Yes. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So if you have any of these weaknesses, whether you're a dishonest person or you somebody that like to riot or, or get drunk all the time or even drunk on false doctrine and not in chambering, you know, you can't control yourself. You don't have any temperance or you in wantonness, having no regard for anybody's feelings but your own. The Lord say it is time for us to come out of that. If you got this strife and this conflict, you don't care how people view you. Hmm. Now, if you don't have no type of integrity on how people view you, 
and you're not walking with God, then that means that you are a danger to yourself and maybe to those that are around you. That's right, brother. Because the Lord said we are supposed to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no way for the flesh because the flesh is a destroyer. We read that earlier, didn't we? Yes, we did, brother. Now let's go in and read, brother, because sometimes people, that's why Lord tell us, repent, be honest with yourself, get down on your knees or in your closet and talk to God and say, Lord, hey, teach me how to love better. Teach me how to be a better husband, a better wife, a better child, better parent, better friend. Teach me how to let my light shine like I have read in the pages of the book. Hey, that's our job to get help. That's right. Now, let's go in and read, brother, because this question, too, has came up. That's why Lord say love worketh no ill to his neighbor. The question is, people have asked or felt as though they are not their brother's keeper. When I read in the book, yes, you are. That's right. That's right. Now, let's go in and read about one of the first haters, Genesis, <laughs> the fourth chapter. Genesis, the fourth chapter. Now, we know that Cain's seed never made it across the flood, but we know that his wickedness made it across. It so did. <laughs> Genesis, the fourth chapter. Am I my brother? Am I my sister's keeper? Yes, says the word of God. He's the first hater. Yeah, he the first hater. And we can read about him. Extreme, too. That brother took it all the way to the end, didn't he? Yes, he did, bro. All right, brother. Genesis 4, and let's pick it up in verse 2 and go ahead. Now, this is talking about Adam and Eve, and she conceived and she bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. Now, that was her firstborn, Cain. Let's read verse 2. Go ahead. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass the Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now, Brother James, the Lord had respect unto Abel's offering because he brought the firstlings and he brought the fat, fat thereof. He brought the best that he had for God. That's right, brother. Now, the Lord expects for us to do that in the flesh, too. You're supposed to be bringing the best that you got to give him. Mm, That's yes, why the Lord say, offer, offer up righteousness unto me. But Cain, he was the older brother. So he should have had a little more love in his game for his little brother and for the Lord. Because even though Cain brought her the fruit of the ground, hey, that was God's fruit anyway. That's right, brother. That's right. So you should have brought the best. Verse 5, go ahead. But unto Cain and to his offering... He had not respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? Yep. If thou doest well, shall not shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shall rule rule so over look him. Look how the Lord was nice enough to tell Cain, look, man, I'm not happy with what you have brought me. So, look, I want you to do better. And that's what the word of God is. It teaches us to do better, does it? Yes, sir. This is the fruit that we have to make sure that we are digesting every day and doing better. But the Lord say, but if you don't do better, if you're not listening to my words, hey, sin life at your door, it's going to get worse. That's right. Now, that right there should have made him say, I don't want to get worse because the Lord just chastised me for not bringing my best. Read verse 8 for me. Go ahead. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Yep. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Hey, how come he wasn't his brother's keeper? He was the older brother for his younger brother. That's right. You see your younger brother getting ready to walk off a cliff or getting ready to run in the street and get hit by a car. You're supposed to 
Go out there and get him. Pull him back. Help That's him. That's right. But this guy here jealous because God loved the works of Abel. He killed his own brother. And then say, am I my brother's keeper? Yeah, you are. But you wasn't a good keeper or a good brother. That's right, brother. And what did the Lord say in that verse 10? Because this lets us know that whether you live to be an old man, old woman, or whether today is your last day, that if you die righteous, hey, your death will cry unto the Lord and he will call you out of that grave, won't he? That's right. Verse 10, and that's it. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Because he died with some righteousness in him. And all of those that had been slayed or killed, whether it was thousands of years ago, they blood also is crying for righteousness. That's why the Lord is going to deliver them. And you're going to see a lot of them in the first resurrection who have made the cut. That's right, brother. And that's what we shooting for, whether we living or dead. We want that first resurrection, don't we? Yes, we do, brother. Now, let's go into Luke 10. Luke 10, brother. And let's go read about somebody who I said that the wickedness of Cain came across the flood. <laughs> Luke 10. Because this world is not short on wickedness, is it? No, it's not. It's so here you, here you got a brother that's laying over there on the side of the road and got his head peeled, bloody, probably ready to die. And let's see his situation. Verse 30. Go ahead. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. They'll do that today, won't they, James? Yes, they will, brother. I mean, ain't no shortage to that all around the world. Verse 31. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Wait, and, no, not the priest. Yes, the priest. Not the, not, not, not the one that's teaching and the lawgiver. That loves, they say you got to love everybody. Right. The one that say you got to love, he passed by on the other side of the street like he didn't see his brother laying over there. So he wasn't his brother's keeper either, just like Cain was. No, he wasn't. Go ahead and read, brother. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. No, not the Levite, the one that's working in the temple of God. Yes, he was too. The one that come under the lineage of Moses and Aaron them, the Levites that do yeah, he, the sacrifice unto the Lord. He passed by too? Yeah, he had that same doctrine. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't his brother's keeper either, was he? No, he wasn't. But let's see somebody who didn't have God like they had him, verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Yes. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Yes. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Yes. Which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. So out of the, out of the three of them, we saw that the priest, he crossed the street. We saw the Levite, he crossed the street. But we saw the Samaritan, he had compassion on him. So which one was his brother's keeper? The Samaritan, right? Yes, it was. And what did the Lord say? Read that verse. 37 for me again and he said he that showed mercy on him then said jesus unto him go and do thou likewise go and do thou likewise to who to your brothers and sisters you, that if you right. see them in a situation it is your job to help them that's right if nothing else call 911 and say hey it's a man over here laying in the ditch don't just walk by like you didn't see him unless the priest and the Levite would have said to themselves, if y'all find me bloody on the side of the road, just leave me there. He wouldn't have said that. Mm -mm. He would have wanted somebody to help him. That's right. And that's why the Lord said, hey, for you to walk across the street, you didn't show no love to your brother. 
That's right, brother. When he needed help. That's it. Didn't even know him and showed hate to him. That's right. Now let's turn over to Job 29. Because Job showed compassion. Just like that Samaritan we just read about. That's why Job say, hey, he know it's a crown laid up for him, too. That's right. <laughs> and that's the calling and election that we have to have, brother. That's right, brother. We got a great opportunity here. Put that flesh aside and serve God with all your might while you got time. That's right. Job 29, and let's pick it up at that verse 1, brother. And when you get there, let's read about some more Job here. Go ahead. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me. Yeah. His candle shine upon my head, and when by his and when by his light I walk through darkness. Oh, so it's only by the light of God that we walk through darkness, right? That's right, brother. So if you said that you have come out of the darkness and you're walking in the light of God, you got a lot of work to do, don't you? That's right. Because you have to stay in that light of God. Because Satan is always there trying to blow your candle out. Yes, he is, brother. Yes, he All is. All the time. And you have to be smart. Job was saying, oh, that he were in the months past before God brought all this sickness on him. All this drama. Verse 4. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Yes. When the Almighty was yet with me. When my children were about me. Listen to what Job say. As in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was in my body, when I was filled with the spirit of God, before the Lord allowed for my children even to be killed. He said, when he was with me, verse 6. When I washed my steps with butter. And the rock poured me out rivers of oil. Yes, that word of God was on him, and it poured him out rivers of oil. Go ahead. When I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street. Now, we're going to skip down, brother, to verse 12, because we read about the Samaritan that had compassion on his brother who he saw wounded, didn't he? That's right. So he was his brother's keeper. Yes, he was. We are all our brothers and our sisters keeper. Thus says the word of God. And let's see the keeping that Job did in verse 12. Go ahead. Because I delivered the poor that cried and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. That's a blessing to have somebody help you when you ain't got nobody else to help you. That's right. Job was helping people. 13. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. And the blessings of him that was ready to perish, the people that was getting ready to die, Job said, hey, I helped them. And I gave them what they needed in order to stay in the game. 14. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. Oh, they go that arm of God, Brother James. We have to put on righteousness, don't we? Yes, we do. Beg for it. Cry for it. Ask the Lord to give it to you every day. 15. I was eyes to the blind and feet was I to the lame. Yes. I was a father to the poor and the cause which I knew not, I searched out. He said, I was eyes to the blind and feet to those that were lame. I was a father to the poor and the cause which I knew not, I searched out. I went through the town to see if anybody needed help. And I was there to help them. Now, that's your brother's keeper, is it? Yes, it is, brother. Yes, it that is. That is what Cain was supposed to have did. He the older brother anyway, and he yes. go ask him, I'm my brother's keeper. Yes, you are. Thus says the word of God, and thus says these good actions of Job right here. That's right, brother. That is right. Turn over to Romans 12 for me. Because the true love of God is the spirit of God, not the flesh. That's right. Because you get people sometimes, hey, they think that they are giving you great love in this flesh when the greatest love is the spirit of God, is it? Yes, sir. Let me know that you my brother's keeper, that you are my sister's keeper. 
that we are all acting like a family. That's great love, is it? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Romans, the 12th chapter. And let's pick it up at that verse 9, because as we spoke earlier, when the Lord said, it's a lot of people walking around fake, <laughs> pretending, playing games with themselves. What do the Lord say in verse 9? Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Yes. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. So Lord say, let love be without dissimulation. Let it not have any false appearance. You go love, love. Ain't no need in playing games. You don't need to pretend. That's right, brother. Because when you got the light of God shining in you, then you have to give love, thus says the Lord. That's right. Skip down, brother, and read that verse 12 for me. Because Lord said we are supposed to be kindly affection one to another. That's why people have to consider themselves. Nobody wants to deal with somebody who always got a bad and nasty attitude. That is right, brother. You should be repenting and say, God, help me to put on your spirit because Jesus didn't display any of that when he came in the flesh. No, he didn't. Verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, mm -hmm. continuing instant in prayer. Pray. Go ahead. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. And we are supposed to be rejoicing. We said we're on the road to salvation, Brother James. We're supposed to be happy, aren't we? Yes, we are. And if we have a little trouble, tribulation along the way, then let us stay constant in prayer. Pray for our brothers and sisters because we only see each other once a week. We don't never know what our brothers and sisters have went through in them last six days. That's right, brother. That's, That's right. why Lord said we're supposed to be continually all the time in prayer. Skip down to verse 17. This is how you are your brothers and sisters keeper also. Go ahead. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So you're not supposed to recompense to no man evil for evil. If a man has been evil and treated and beat up and left on the side of the road, it is evil for you to not acknowledge that and try and help him. That's right. Now, can you imagine if that guy, when that guy recovered and if he had went to the place and saw the preacher and the Levite and saw both of them left him on the road, he would say, what kind of church is this? That's right. That's right. Verse 19, brother. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves but rather give place into wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Yes. Therefore thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So Lord is saying that, hey, we're not supposed to avenge ourselves. He said, live peaceably with all men, if possible, and all women. Sometimes it's not possible to have that peace. So what you have to do is just keep your distance. That's right. Sometimes that's peace. That is right. And Lord saying, we are supposed to, if our enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he thirsts, give him drink. And if you see him laying on the side of the road, help him, right? That's right. Help him. Verse 21, brother. Go ahead. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Because hate knows that love is the cure. That is right. Hate knows that. That's why it's always trying to make you stay a hater because you can get rid of love when you ain't got nothing but hate. That's right. Turn over to Hebrews 12, brother. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Because when life is not a bed of roses for us, we have to remember the thorns that Jesus took for us, don't we? That's right. And the spikes. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. And let's pick it up at that verse 1 when you get there, brother. Because the Lord is always telling us that, hey, that we have an obligation to be patient and to be long-suffering, even with one another sometime. Hebrew 12 and 1. Go ahead. 
Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So Lord is telling us that, hey, we have to be careful because we have a cloud of witnesses. When nobody else see me and you, Brother James, them angels see us, don't we? Yes, they do. They see exactly what we're doing. And the Lord say, and let us lay aside every weight and the sin that's always waiting to jump on our back and ride us to the grave. The Lord say we are supposed to avoid that and run with patience the race that is set before us because at the end of the race is eternal life. We're supposed yes, to be sir. running there with all our might, aren't we? Yes, we are, brother. Verse two, brother. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yes. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. So look how the Lord is telling us how he endured the cross and how with his faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross because he knew that once he came back out of the grave, all power was going to be given unto him. So he kept joy for that. That's why no matter what we going through, we supposed to keep our eye on the end of the road because eternal life is there. The light is shining for us at the end of that road. Yes, it is. And the Lord say, and consider when Jesus went through all of that that he went through, that, hey, don't you faint and be weary in your minds. Continue to work. Skip down and read 11 because the Lord know we have some trials and tribulations. And he says, it's not no fun now, but keep your eye on the prize. Go ahead. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but mm -hmm. grievous. Nevertheless, yeah. afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Amen. Go ahead. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Yes. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Oh, so if you're not follow, trying to follow peace with all men and be holy, you ain't going to even see the Lord. Mm -mm. So Lord is always telling us we have a job to do. And he's saying, make straight paths for your feet because whether you choose a road of wickedness or whether you choose a road of righteousness, Jesus is waiting at the end of that road to give every man his reward according to how he lived his life. That's right, brother. If he didn't have no repenting in there, then hey, he ain't got nothing good coming. Skip down and read 28 and 29 because God don't play. Go ahead. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. For our God is a consuming fire, even that lake of fire, isn't it? That's right. Hey, brother. And so we have to be mindful of that because that's why the Lord got the example of the thief. Hey, the thief said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom because he saw that this was the son of God, didn't he? That's right. He had to. That's right. Now, he certainly didn't think he'd get into the kingdom and still be a thief. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he had to repent and change his ways. And you can do that even at your last breath because God is merciful. And who can say that that can't be so? That's right. Second Thessalonians 3, brother. Second Thessalonians 3. And let's pick it up at that verse 1 because you have to be careful of people who are wicked and people who have no faith because they can pull you down with them. Second 
Thessalonians, the third chapter, and verse one, brother, and go ahead when you get there. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it, with, as it is with you. Yes. And that we may be delivered from the from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Now, isn't that a dangerous situation to be in if you are hanging out with unreasonable and wicked people who don't even have no faith? That's right. Yes, it is. And Paul was saying, hey, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of God may have free course, that it may live in our mortal bodies, and so that we may be glorified because Paul is telling us that we have to pray for one another. That's right. We don't never know the troubles. Everybody don't go around telling everybody their business, but hey, I know if you came out the dirt of the ground that you got an issue or two. That's right. Skip down, brother, verse 13 and read for me. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him. That so look at the Lord. That's right, that he may be ashamed. But the Lord say, but ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Keep on doing what pleases the Lord. You can't worry about man. Sometimes he get upset because you serving God. That's what Cain did, didn't he? That's right. He got upset at Abel. But you have to continue on your pathway because, read that verse three for me. Three? Yeah, verse three in that same book. Go ahead. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Didn't the Lord tell us that he rebuked the devourer for our sake? That's right. That he will help us sometime even when our strength is gone? Romans 15, brother. Romans the 15th chapter. Because the grace of God comes from God. All good comes from him. Didn't the Lord tell us all good come from above? Yes, it did. Sometimes we try and give ourselves too much credit like, you know, we were born with all this goodness. No, we wasn't. It's the word of God that teaches us how yes, to be good. Does. Yes, it does. We have weak and strong brothers. That's why we have to be there for one another. God is a family. Yes, it is. Romans 15 and 1, brother. Go ahead. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. So if the Lord is telling us here that we that are strong have to bear the infirmities of the weak, then that makes us our brother and our sister's keeper, does it? That's right. Verse 3, and then we go skip down. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For even Christ pleased not himself. He didn't do nothing to nobody, even when he came, did he? No, he didn't. That's right. He just came, laying his life down, got off his throne of majesty came down here, put on that filthy flesh, was tempted in all points like us, but without sin, and died for the sins of the whole world. That's right. Don't we owe him? Yes, we do. We got to walk before God and do it with all our might. Verse 13, go ahead. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. So, Brother James, if the Lord said that his mindset is that none should perish, but that all should come into the knowledge of God, then this 14, verse 14, where it says, and I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge. Because if you are filled with all goodness, you got righteousness up in there, don't you? Yes, you, yes, you do. And we are able, and also we are supposed to admonish. We're supposed to warn gently our brothers and sisters who we know are walking contrary to God on how to get salvation. That makes us our keeper of our sisters and brothers, don't it? That's right, brother. That's right. 
So we have a job to do here. And the Lord has been telling us that. Read that verse 15 for me, and that'll be it. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written a more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. Brother James, you got the grace of God by just being on this program this evening and me also. That's right. And the people out there who are listening, our listening audience, you have the grace of God also. So we have to make sure that we are making the most out of that because the Lord has trusted us, Brother James, this evening to be able to bring forth this word of God. What an honor. That's right, brother. It is an honor. And for anybody out there who is listening and understanding what we're saying, what an honor, Brother Jane. It's an honor. That grace is a beautiful thing. We got two more verses, very short. Let's go to 2 Chronicles, the 15th chapter, and we're going to read one verse there. Because just hold on to your great reward. Because it's coming, brothers and sisters. It is coming. The Lord promised to give it to all those that love him. And I love the Lord, Jane. I do too, brother. Yes, sir. And our viewers are screaming that they love the Lord also. <laughs> Second Chronicles 15, brother. And let's see what the Lord say in that verse 7. One verse. Go ahead. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. Because the Lord's word is power. So he don't want us to walk around all week like we're not sure about our salvation. We're not doing the things to try and get salvation. You have to put your hands to the plow and please God. That's right, brother. With some work That's why it. the Lord say, hey, and your work will be rewarded. He going to take good care of us. Now let's go into the last scripture, brother. Galatians, the sixth chapter. Because evil receives a reward and good receives a reward. But we ask you to please choose the good reward. That's right, brother. Galatians 6. And let's see what the Lord say here. Pick it up at that verse 1 and read for me, brother. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Because we have an obligation to make sure that if a brother is overtaken in a fault and you say you are spiritual, you're supposed to give him some words to get him back on track or some words that could get him to stop doing those actions that upset the Lord. That's right. Because if you ignoring the wickedness that's going around you, ain't my business, I ain't got nothing to say. It might come a time when that wickedness would tempt you. That is right. And you might end up in some foolishness. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Yes, because that's what Christ is saying. He bore, he bared the burden of us all, didn't he? Of the whole world. Of the whole world. So he said, hey, you're supposed to be there to help your brother and sister when they need some help. That's Verse right. 3. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Yeah, because we all filthy rags. That's it. We all dirt bags. That's it. That's true. <laughs> so who can go around and act like they clean dirt? <laughs> no such thing. <laughs> go ahead, brother. Read verse four. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Because if you prove your own work, Brother James, when it comes time to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you ain't going to be holding nobody's hand. Mm -mm. This is an individual reward, isn't it? That's right. It's going to be given to everybody whose works have did good by the Lord. That's right. Because that's why the Lord say, though Noah, Daniel, and Job, three righteous men stood before me. They can't deliver nobody but themselves. That's it. Verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Yeah. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, 
that shall he also reap. Mm -hmm. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So look how the Lord is telling us. He said, the Lord said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. He's not fake. You can't fake him out. Even when you pretending God know all about it. And the Lord said that, hey, we have to understand that whatsoever a man plant in the ground, you plant nothing but wickedness in the ground, that's what you're going to have to eat later on. That's right. If you plant righteousness in the ground, hey, you're going to get you a crown. But the Lord said, but he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And we know that worms corrupt bodies, don't they? Yes, they do. Eat them up. Eat them up, brother. But they'll be around forever. Mm -hmm. And it says, and he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. That's what this is all about, is it? Yes, it is. Now read 9 and 10, and that's it, brother. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Yes. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. And so look how the Lord telling us again, don't get weary if you're doing the right things. You're doing the things that please God. He said, don't even faint because you got a reward coming. He said, but as therefore we have opportunity, as long as you're still breathing, let us do good unto all men. That's right. Especially unto them who are the household of faith. So that's, that's right. even the brothers and sisters that's on the same road of salvation as we are. We are supposed to be more patient and long suffering with them as well because we know the battle that they can be up against sometimes. That's right. But then sometimes with some people, you have to keep your distance until they get it together. But also we have to do it unto all men. So even the strangers, if you give somebody you never met the Ten Commandments, you just showed them some love, didn't you? Yes, you did. Now let's go into James, the fifth chapter. James 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. James 5 and 13. Go ahead. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Mm -hmm. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Yes. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And Brother James, like the Lord said, hey, these are the words of God Almighty. And the Lord say he can remove any sickness, whether it's physical or spiritual. He is the true healer. That's right, brother. So we thank everybody for joining us this evening. And until we come together, be safe and be blessed. In Jesus' name, good night. Good night. Good night, brother James. Good night, brother Cornell.